there were mental health providers that I went to that were not, you know, com competent on trans health care or trans, just transgender period. And um, it was hard because it was like I had to teach them how to treat me when I was actually going there for help. And the same with certain doctors, you know, who weren't fully competent on hormone levels or, or, or giving you hormones or knowing what you're going through daily. It was always that struggle of, is this the doctor that I'm going to go to where I'm going to have to explain myself? The funny thing that always gets me is because of my gender market change and everything, the first question they ask is, um, when was the last time you had your menstrual and do you have any babies? And when I say no, that's not genetically possible, there's a bulb that goes off on their head and some doctors, you know, have this strange look and then the others are like, oh wow, I didn't know and want to like overcompensate by complimenting me and like, oh my god, you look so beautiful. And that doesn't do it any better either. I just want to be treated normal. Well, for me, a good medical experience is when you walk in and you see an inclusive space. And when I say an inclusive space, I mean when you see... I know I keep harping on like the, the employment aspect, but when you see trans people actually working there, you know you're safe. Or when your paperwork is inclusive enough, when it can actually have a space where it actually sex assigned at birth and gender identity, because that removes some of the barriers to unwanted questions, like when was your last menstrual, when I don't necessarily get that. Or asking me about mammograms and pap smears, and when I know that I will never get that, or I haven't had that yet. So having inclusive paperwork and giving people the um, opportunity to self-identify and kind of put the information there, it removes that barrier. For me, that's a great experience. I go to a clinic, like a community health clinic or whatever, and she's one of the ones that's not a trans provider specifically, but she just seems like she's done her research on the drug and the side effects and how much is too much or how much whatever and then allows me to like be within a certain range and she doesn't she really doesn't have a lot of opinions about what I should be doing or shouldn't be doing in terms of transitioning she's like you can take this much and it will do this and if you go down here it'll do this you know and so that's been really nice I think like there needs to be a lot of understanding so then therapists and actually medical providers can be nuanced with people like I think that the medical providers and the therapists should have all the information and do a lot of research about all different kinds of trans experiences different options for people so that for example when I when someone says oh I'm trans they don't just assume it's just this one thing in a medical uh, perspective I I think there's a weird bureaucracy going on now because we're in that transition period of like, oh yeah, people's pronouns should be respected in legal forms and their name, their chosen or real name should be acknowledged as well. But then it gets lost in all this bureaucracy. For example, I go to like, to get tested and I put Librada on my form, but then the person just totally just like ignores that and goes to my legal name and calls me by my legal name. And it's like, what's the point? Or then. You know, or in other forms that have, has, ha, haven't been updated, the person will be like, will call me like that, or they'll email me with my, my legal name, by my legal name, and then it's like, why did I sign that form for? Or in other cases too, they've, which is more like an electronic bureaucracy, people have been like, what are your pronouns? And I'm like, they, them, theirs. You know, I've been in some occasions, and they're like, oh, we don't have that in the system. And I'm like, why do you ask? <laughs> Why do you make me to be vulnerable if you're not going to be there for me at the other end? So my experiences in the health system as a transgender person are, I think, very tied up with the experience of also being a sex worker, which I was for about 17 years. And I think the combination of, of being a transgender person and then being a sex worker left a lot of healthcare providers um, uncomfortable around me. Um, think that they didn't understand really necessarily who I was or what was going on, just that I might be risky because I think transgender is coded as risky and then sex workers are coded as being risky. So it didn't even matter really the behaviors I was engaging in. It just kind of felt like they needed to manage me. It, it's really important that instead of just being like, okay, this person poses a threat to themselves or to the society that um, medical providers actually pay attention to that person's body and, and really think about what else might be going on. 
I do have a medical provider that understands me now, and every time I go and see her, she's great, right? But I had to kiss so many frogs, you know, to find this princess, you know. Uh, you know, I encounter medical providers that refuse to see me. Just like that. Oh, no, I'm not going to see you. And had, you know, not even made an effort to say, like, to, to, to masquerade it with something. They're like, I'm not going to see you because you're trans. Um, I had uh, experiences where um, doctors try to change me. They, um, I guess they felt like they had the right to uh, talk me into not being trans. Um, I had experiences where I was asked intrusive questions uh, about my genitalia, uh, about what my plans for my genitalia were uh, and um, basically they tried to tell me what to do with my body when I believe that being trans is actually taking control of your body and not doing what other people want. So I had um, a lot of terrible experience, I had like, you know, uh, disrespectful experiences. Um, but a good experience uh, uh, is an experience that is seamless, that is like, like anybody else. Like, you know, I'm not looking for that experience where like my gender is elevated and like transness and trans flags in the back uh, wall. You know, I'm looking for just an experience. Hi, who are you? What's your problem? This is how you think we can fix this problem. And if it has something to do with my body, let's talk about my body. But if it doesn't, let's not go there. I live with psoriasis, that is a skin disease that happened mostly in my, in my elbows. One time I went to a dermatologist that asked to see my genitals. And I told him, I don't have psoriasis in my genitals. And he said, I just need to check. And it made me feel terrible. Borderline violated. And um, it's not something that will encourage me in the future to seek medical services again, right? Bad experiences, they're not just bad experiences that end when the bad experience ends. You know, bad experiences stay there for a long period of time and then you make decisions based on those experiences. And for that is that, for, for those bad, bad experiences that I had, you know, is that, you know, many times if I have to go to a doctor, I think twice. And I'm like, oh, maybe this will go away on its own. I don't need to see a doctor. And that's not something that should be, you know. We should all feel comfortable with going to a doctor, right?